because we are with the mind, when we want to raise our consciousness, it's a big problem. But I think this is a problem which ought to be tackled before we tackle the other problems. Because it appears that if we can tackle the problem of how to raise our consciousness to solve problems, we have in fact solved all problems. So why waste our time in solving individual problems when we can solve the big problem which solves in turn all problems? If we can solve the problem of how to raise our consciousness to the higher level of awareness from where we operate beyond the mind, from where love, intuition and beauty radiate from us. If we can reach that level, let's solve this problem, all of the problems will take care of themselves. How do we do it? It is obvious from the behavior of the mind, which we have been noticing all these years, it will not help us to solve this problem. Obvious. If we still rely upon the mind to solve this problem, we'll never solve it. The mind has done its job, told us, I am doing a good job, hold on, I'm getting all the answers, and all the answers will come, I'll solve the problem. I'm getting some more information, some more data, I'm collecting everything. I'm reading some more books, hearing more lectures, meeting more people, finding more gurus, finding more yogis and teachers. I'm doing all that. Once I get all that stuff ready, I'll solve this problem. <laughs> Why are we impatient? That's what the mind says, very appealing, logical. It's so logical. We say, yeah, we go along with the mind and never solve the problem. We can spend a whole lifetime in this. In fact, people have spent a whole lifetime in this. People have spent year after year, year after year doing the same thing. I, I hear people telling me, oh, we've been studying this for eight years, for 12 years. Oh, we are very close to it now. We've done all the study. Now we just want to find the right book. And we are told the right book will come at the right time across the corner somewhere. We are waiting for that. What kinds of things the mind will start? And if somehow you are able to exhaust all these avenues that are open to the mind, then the mind will say, all right, now I found out the way, what's the hurry? We can do it tomorrow. <laughs> it's such a wonderful way the mind says we'll do it tomorrow. We all know it. What ought to be done today, the mind will invariably suggest we'll do it tomorrow if it goes against the mind's will. If it's what the mind wants, that means to leave your level of awareness to the mental level, it will say, why wait till tomorrow? This is good. Have it today. Enjoy while the day is there. Tomorrow we die. That's how it argues. Therefore, let us face the problem that the mind will not solve its own problem, nor will it be a party to solving the problem. Let's not be mistaken by this. Let us not goof around with the mind and waste more time with it, if we really want to solve the problem. If we are not interested in solving the problem, remain in the company, excellent intellectual company of the mind and spend another lifetime, and stay with the other problems also. The mind cannot solve the problem. Who else will? Well, maybe a good book can. Good book by a master. Good religious book or a scripture. Maybe that should do it. If we get hold of the right book, we should do it. All right. We get a book to read. We read it very thoroughly because we want to get the best out of the book. And we suddenly discover that what we are reading is what the mind knows. We are not reading the book. We are reading our mind again. We have gone back to that point. The mind accepts only that part of the book which it already knows. It will skip over the pages that it does not understand. It will reject the ideas that it does not accept. It will willingly devour those pages and the ideas which it already knows about. Ah, that's the truth. That's it. That's it. I knew it. It's there. If you knew it, what are, what are you getting from the book? And what have we got in this exercise? We have got into the trap of the mind again. Instead of getting away from the mind, through the book, we have gone back to the mind to solve the problem. A book read by the mind can solve no problem. And certainly not the problem 
of how to raise our level of awareness or consciousness to the intuitive love, beauty level. Maybe nature is a good way to look at it, because after all, nature is the creator, is everything. Let's look at nature. There we'll get the answer. The birds singing in the morning, the lovely grass, and all those beautiful things around us. They should be able to give us the answer. We should find the level of our higher awareness directly by looking at nature. So we go out to nature. And we find nature doesn't speak to us except through the mind. A bird doesn't speak to us except the language the mind gives it. We start from the smallest tree, plant, to the best animal we find in the nature. Every life form and every non-living form we go through and we find it speaks what our mind speaks. We understand no language of nature except what mind interprets. We are again back with the mind. Maybe we are wasting our time with books and nature and all that. We should go to the world of ideas from where everything was created, as Socrates said, and find out if that is the truth. Okay, we go into ideas. Again, it's the mind. It seems that this mind seems to be all pervasive. We used to give this property to God. It seems to belong to the mind. Whichever side we look, we find our own mind. What is left then? If the mind is not going to solve this problem, and wherever we look, outside or inside, we find it is the mind, how do we find the solution to this problem? There is only one avenue left. And I have not mentioned that. If our mind is causing this problem, why not somebody else's mind? Oh, we didn't think of that possibility. If my mind is coming in the way of finding the solution to this problem, and it is my mind, whether I go to nature or I go to a book or I go to a lecture, it's my mind that is trying to solve the problem, and that will not solve the problem for its own vested interest. What about another mind? Whose mind? Well, it can only be another person, another human being. Nobody else has a mind. Another human being? Why am I not a good enough human being to have guidance from another human being? How is the mind of another human being more qualified to give me a solution to the problem than my own mind? If my mind is creating the trouble, how will the other human being not give me the problem and the trouble? Of course he will. But supposing the other human being has solved the problem, then we have found the solution. That's the solution. If we can find another human being who has solved the problem of raising levels of consciousness, then he is the guy who can help us not to follow our mind and yet find the way to solve the problem of how to raise our level of consciousness. I have tried to explore the whole wide world and this entire universe to see if there is anything else besides another human being who has raised the level of consciousness. I have really made a search. I want all of you to help me if you have found anything. I have found there is no other way. Everything else turns around back to my own mind. And I have discovered that my mind cannot solve the problem of how to raise the level of consciousness. Only another human being who has already raised his level of consciousness can help me to raise my level of consciousness. But how will I know that the other guy has raised his level of consciousness? There are so many claiming all over the place. We advertise every day. Come, raise your level of consciousness. We have done it. Pay a fee, short course, and there you are up. So many gurus, so many masters, teachers, yogis. Which one do we find? How do we trust? What is the criterion? How do we find that a person has really done it? And it is not a hoax. There again, I can tell you personally, the number of hoax teachers and masters is so large that the problem is real. In India, for example, from where many gurus come, we are landed with a situation where there are more gurus than disciples. You can shop around for as many gurus as you like. We don't have enough disciples to go around. Unless some people from here go as visitors and tourists, then they do good business. But the point is, we are we able to find a person who has raised his level of consciousness? First of all, the mind will fight this in a big way. 
He is not different from me. Even if he has raised his level of consciousness, he is a human being. He is just like me. If he can do it, I can do it. Why should I not do it? You have to overcome that first hurdle. But granting that after all this running around to nature and books and everything and being hit behind to the wall, one has come to the conclusion, look, I couldn't do it. Even if I could, I haven't done it. All right, now let me take the next step. And I want to find a guy who has his level of consciousness raised already. How do I find it? How do I judge that his level has been raised? It's a very interesting question. A person who has raised his level of consciousness to a continuous use of intuition must be a wide awake man. He must have his inner eyes open. How can he be only get an accidental intuition and he can't hold on to that? The mind drives it away. We get just a fleeting moment of love and we destroy it without thinking. We just get one view of beauty and we spoil it by analysis. How can that guy who has raised his level of consciousness to a continuous use of his intuitive abilities and radiates love and beauty all the time, how can he hold on to that unless his inner eyes are open? He must have the capacity to see all the time. Otherwise, how can he hold on to that level of awareness? And if he has his eyes open and we have our eyes closed, it looks a little funny that we are trying to find him. As if this whole room was full of blind people, or people with their eyes shut, and there was one amongst us who had his eyes open. And all these people with their eyes shut are groping around to find the man who has his eyes open. How can the blind people whose eyes are not open even search or seek one who has his eyes open? Yet we like to be seekers, searchers of the reality, of the guru, of the truthful one, of the one with higher consciousness. But can we do it? The answer is obvious. That the person whose eyes are not open cannot seek, cannot find. But the one whose eyes are open, he can find. Then if his eyes are really open and we call for him, he should be able to respond. Taking the example again of the blind man groping around in the dark, not finding the door out till the man with eyes can hold them. The man with eyes open looks at them and finds that that one is really very keen. Look at the way he's going around. Look at his face. Look at this earnestness with which he's seeking. Look at his passion for finding me. He's watching all that, obviously. He has eyes open, he's watching everybody. When he watches that one of them is so earnest, so keen to find, he stretches his hands forward. And that blind man, still groping, hits upon the hands, holds them. I have found you. I knew one day I'll find you. He still believes he has found him because his eyes are not yet open. His level of awareness has not been raised. Level of consciousness has not been raised to the spiritual level where he can overcome the mind. But when the man with eyes open, with his level of awareness already raised, helps him to overcome his mind and raise his own level of consciousness, he discovers, I did not find him, he found me. This discovery itself is a discovery of great joy. I thought I found, no, he found me. That's a great discovery, a great joy. And it comes when we are ready to be found, when we have that earnestness. That is why in the Indian disciplines we say, when the chela is ready, the guru appears. When the disciple is ready, the master appears. The disciple can do no more than be ready. And what is the readiness of a disciple? Readiness to be found to be sought, earnestness, eagerness to be found, the eagerness to discover the method of raising consciousness is all that is required. Once that is there, then the one who has to raise his level of consciousness must appear. When I say a thing like this to a western audience, an American audience like this, they say, but how will that guy know that we are doing all this? Well, I tell them, if that guy doesn't know we are doing all this, he's not worth finding anyway. We are not looking for that guy. 
who doesn't even know what we are doing. We are looking for a guy who knows what we are doing. He may be anywhere in the world, he ought to know what we are doing. And if he can't appear when we are ready, he is not the guy we are looking for. We will wait. Therefore, we can be in a state of readiness to find one who has this level of consciousness raised and that he will find us. But he, he must, when he, when he stretches his hands, how does he stretch his hands? He appears. We see him. We hold his hand. We talk to him. Then how do we know we have found him? Well, we see the very qualities that we are talking of. What we want to do with our consciousness, he should have done. And there should be enough evidence of that. We want to get over the problems of the mind. He should not have problems of the mind. If he has, he is not the guy we are looking for. We want to have the experience of love. He should radiate love at all times. If he doesn't, he is not the guy we are looking for. We want to give up the logic and reasoning ability and go into intuitive abilities. He should express intuitive knowledge to us, to our satisfaction. Otherwise, he's not the guy we want. We want to achieve beauty. He should be beautiful. He should radiate beauty towards us. If he doesn't do this, he's not the guy. If he really radiates love, then he's not himself. He's with us. If he's with us, he's with all of us. He should be loving for all. If he's not, he's not the guy we are looking for. These are simple signs which the mind will still reject. But since we have decided that we have allowed the mind to have its say, knock around, get helpless and keep on the corner, keep in a corner, then we should look for these signs when he appears. And we haven't to ask him, have you appeared? Are these the signs? No. He must show himself. And when we have seen, then he should say, yes, that's right. Himself. If he does it, we have found that person whose mind, whose consciousness can be used as a method to raise the level of our own consciousness. Who can now help us to solve the problem by consciousness raising? We have solved the big problem. How will he do it? What will be his method to teach us how to raise our consciousness? He will teach us not to go back into his mind or into our mind. He will teach us how to withdraw ourselves from our mind. He will teach us that the mind is not ourself. He will teach us how to look at our minds. He will teach us see what the mind is doing. He will show us the functioning of our mind. He will by love remove our doubts and our fears. He will communicate with us without speaking words. When he will speak words, they will mean more than what he says. He will follow his methods. These are the simple methods he will follow, by which he is able to raise our level of consciousness to his own level, which is the level from which his love and joy, beauty, intuition are flowing. When that is done, we have solved all problems. This indeed is the method of solving problems of problems and all problems by the technique of consciousness raising. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any questions on this subject? I will be glad to answer. Yes. If and when you finally hate that person, that person teaches them how to uh, reach that level of awareness. Yes. That sounds rather simple. It is simple. Truth is very simple. The mind is not. The mind wants to complicate it. Doesn't like a simple answer. Is that right? Yes, I feel uncomfortable <laughs> with that. <laughs> <laughs> um, does the person that is teaching that teach them how to raise their consciousness? Well, they just be not that would be a great conflict. The person who is speaking has always got a conflict. His mind is resisting receptivity. And his soul, which wants to attain its own level of consciousness, being receptive, his conflict will become immediately relieved. The mind will say no, the soul will say yes, 
And by that view, you can see what's happening. Mind is resistant to the mind. And then the way of expressing it is so-called alpha level. No, alpha level is only part of the mental level. So this mental awareness you're speaking of is not the alpha level or the theta level or anything like that? This is above the mental level. It transcends time. Alpha level is in the time. Does it take a long time to learn that? Alpha level takes long. No, no I'm speaking of the other. Uh, <laughs> no, it doesn't. You find the right side. <laughs> Your preparing for being ready to meet the guy may take long time. It doesn't take long for him who knows his job to do it. Where do you search for this? Within yourself. That's not satisfactory. You reframe your question, I'll give you another one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> where do you um, where do you find that person? And how do you uh, recognize it when you find the person? That's what I was talking about, that you don't find him, he finds him. And when he finds you, then he shows the signs I have mentioned for you to recognize him. I have just answered that, um, these two questions earlier. You don't find him. You be ready to be found. Because if you had the eyes to find him, if you really knew how to find him, you didn't, don't really need him. If that capacity is there in us to find him, we don't really need him. It's only because we don't have, we don't have that knowledge to find him. If we don't have the knowledge to find him, how can we say where to find him? You stay where you are, ready, in readiness to be found. If you are not found, then of course you raise a question. I was in a state of readiness and I was not found. Then I'll give you another one. Yes. Yes. It doesn't seem like we have enough to do with it. It doesn't seem like we have anything to do with it. We just sit and wait and uh, it either happens or it doesn't happen. No, no, you try your best. First of all, I have gone through the whole process. First of all, knock your intellect to exhaustion. Fine, because unless you do that, the intellect will go on asking these questions. Seek to the intellect, to the, till the intellect says, I give up. If that doesn't happen, you won't wait. You say, we'll wait patiently, we can't do it. It's not possible. So when you try with the intellect, and the intellect says, I can't find the answer, then you say, all right, I really want to seek. Declare your intention. I really want to seek. I found the intellect doesn't do it. If that guy doesn't appear at that point, then you come back and ask the next question. My experience traveling around the world is that that is the point when he appears by himself without your calling him. That's my experience. Yes. So there's an old saying that if you're lost in the woods, you shouldn't uh, move. You know, stay in the same way, otherwise you might get further lost. So are you more or less saying this? Or I always thought that, uh, I mean, when you say, I believe that the master will find you, but it doesn't it might imply that you might still read a book or go out to a lecture or something? I mean, yes, go on doing your house. And, I am saying go on doing your best. Not forgetting, not forgetting, not right. forgetting, not forgetting that eventually he has to find it. Yeah, maybe if you can get the mind to to admit that it cannot find the master of its own right. accord and then just kind of proceed to... That's right. That's the first step. To go to an extent where the mind admits that it cannot find it. Then, of course, you find it. Till that point, the mind doesn't accept this proposition, which is not logical. How can he find it? How can anyone find it? The mind can give hundred arguments. We are talking of the level of consciousness beyond the universal mind. Do you realize what I am talking about? I am not talking of an improved mind or a sharp mind at all. I am talking of a, a human being who has raised this level of consciousness beyond the mind, beyond the universal mind, beyond where he can know everybody's mind. It has gone beyond that. I am talking of that guy. I am not talking of a man who just improved his mind or is a mind reader. No, that person, and I wouldn't accept anyone less, why should I suggest anyone less to you? I won't accept somebody who just has a sharp mind and can come and read my mind and tell me do this. No, I will not shop for anything less than one who has personally raised this level of consciousness beyond the mind. He alone, I will allow myself to be found. So I am not letting you get down to anybody less than that. 
If he is the guy, he must know. If he doesn't know, he's not the guy. It's as simple as that. If such a guy doesn't exist, then the whole system breaks down, then nothing exists. The propositions I'm making are based upon the reality of our souls. That the mind is not our self. That beyond the mind, we have the soul which is real. And the soul has these properties. And one who has raised his level of awareness to the soul level, he alone can help us. And that is real spiritual level. So I am suggesting that you don't even look for a person less than that. Nor even accept a person less than that. You may not be able to find, but you may have to accept. Don't accept anything less than that. Because that is your objective. It will not solve problems if you find a man with a sharp mind. How will it solve problems? When I say problem solving by consciousness raising, it is consciousness raising to a level above the mind. Yes. He says this is a awareness that is uh, beyond universal mind. Beyond universal. Yes. Does that mean that um, is there any way for a person to reach at, to at least reach the level of the universal mind, not beyond it, but to reach the level of the universal mind? Can you do that without the aid of that person, or not? Or did, or when you meet that person, do they take you to that level and then beyond that? Yes, they take you to that level and then beyond. So you can't even go to the universal mind without that person. Is that right? Yes. You mentioned um, that, that we won't accept something unless uh, the mind already knows it. Now that kind of implies a difference in people's knowledge. Now what is that knowledge based on? On uh, verbalization of what they know. Yeah, we how, we, how we is... know something, but we have not put it across outside of ourselves in a particular form. When it is put across to us, either by a book or a lecture or words, we say, ah, that is it. So what is the nature of the difference in these levels of knowledge? I mean, it kind of implies uh, previous life or previous works. Oh, but that is, of course, a different subject altogether. Since you have raised the question, the nature of uh, differences in the level of this knowledge would be the nature of differences in the experiences in not one life, but all the lives put together. When a person says he knows something, it's not necessarily from this life. Even the impressions that the mind carries from previous lives is carried on with him. So when he finds that he knows something, he may be knowing from a previous life. For example, there is a there is there are a number of people, there's a small child in India, in Jaipur, city of Jaipur. A small child, it's just like any other children. But if you call upon that child to give a discourse, a very typical philosophical subject, the child will sit down cross legged and give an excellent discourse using all the philosophical concepts that have been evolved so far. And then you can never imagine that's a child. And then we get up and say, now mom, can I go and run and play? Am I dumb? The child, I've seen the child. Say, you can't say it has been picked up in this life at all. So there's a continuity of experience going on. So when we relate to a particular knowledge, a degree of knowledge, or a extent of awareness of a person, or extent of knowledge of a person, it extends not only to the experience of this life, but even beyond. When a person reads a book that says, I understand it, he may understand it for what he understood in the previous life. Yes. So is, is that um, what they mean by the universal mind? Is it, uh, if we had access to the universal mind, wouldn't we all know that? Wouldn't we all have access to that and understand that? Yes. So is, it, is it true that all knowledge that's ever been, ever had, isn't that available in the universal mind? It is. And isn't there a way to tap that for all of us? It is. Sorry, I have to give only yes and if it's answer to you. Or you state the question with its answer. So I just agree with you. That is the answer. Yes. Yes, if we don't know, we can ask him. If we don't know. If we know, fine. It takes a little time for us, even after finding such a guy, to learn to rely upon our intuition. We are so accustomed to using the mind and intellect. We have been rejecting the intuitive flashes all our lives. So even to get used to this new technique takes a little time. We can ask him all this. Yes. Are you saying that we really know what I am really saying I am really saying that we are everything. We are only not aware of it. And what we are not conscious of it. 
What that other guy is also going to do is not to transfer his consciousness to us. He is going to raise our level of consciousness to what, where we get to know. It's within us. All knowledge is within us. Nothing comes from outside. All level of consciousness, all level raising of consciousness, all answers to problems, all knowledge, everything will, will come from within us. Nothing from outside. So the teacher is to remind you of what you already know. Not remind you. To make you aware of what you already know. Not to remind you. Even if we are reminded, we don't do it. Yes. The teacher is not a personal, I mean a person, right? The teacher appears to be a person. <laughs> he appears to be a person because in fact he is in our cells. That's what I mean. And since we don't look into ourselves, we have to look outside. When we look outside, he appears to be a person within us. What is outside is the symbol that functions as part of yourself. And the difference between the symbol outside and other people outside is that other people draw you out. This one pushes you back into yourself. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, mean, I don't know. I, maybe she realized this. But <laughs> he manifests himself as a human person. For years, I, I had a book that says when the chila is ready, the guru appears, and I thought he would appear inside me, and I would be the guru. So he manifests outside I mean, of the person. He will be in reality a manifest person. That's right. Just like that's why he said appears like a person. He'll be just like a human being, like us. Not different, like us. That's the only way we'll communicate and relate to him. Mm -hmm. He must appear in a form in which he is like us. At least we should be able to experience intuitive joy, love and beauty with him. If we can't do that, what kind of a teacher is he? What master is he? Yes. Can't you relate that way to a false master? False guru? You can. I mean, he can love you. Yes. Share beauty with you. He yes. may not have the answer. Yes, that is true. He can do that. The the mind will like to absorb what the false guru is doing. Because if he is false, that means he hasn't raised his level of consciousness. That's the implication. When you say false, this means he is not one who has raised his level of consciousness. If he has not raised his level of consciousness, he is himself using the mind. He will relate to you with his mind. And therefore, he will never have the real experience of love. He'll create attachments. He will never give you intuitive knowledge. He'll give you logic, reason, reason logic, reason knowledge. He will not give you beauty. He'll give you orderliness. The real master must this is speculation. He must um, really be aware of how godlike he is, that he is really God. The real master must know that. Sure. And this a higher level of awareness must be, that must be what that higher level of awareness really is, to really recognize that. And, and a real master must, uh, his efforts must be toward helping that person uh, become aware, to really believe that he has got. Not believe, knows. Mm -hmm. He not only knows, he is. It's as simple as that. <laughs> When he has raised his level of awareness to a level beyond the universal mind and is still at the soul level, he will not be a master. He has solved his problem. From that level, he expands to the level of totality. Like there is a universal mind, there is a total soul. That's the master. That's the master. He is God, because that is God. There is no other God. He is not an agent of God. He is God in human form. Thank you very much.